How's it going, YouTube? Yeah, Pat Mack here, coach of the Sacramento Saints, slash bring you our week four match in the PBA up against Ellie, coach of the Shanghai Dragons. You can see the team that she has brought to the match down below. You can see the team that I have brought over to the right, as well as in the main screen here, um, along with EVs, stat spreads, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the game plan here. This is going to be another in-depth analysis. I did this for PBA week three. If you haven't checked that out, definitely go watch it. I got some pretty positive feedback about doing this kind of style of um, draft video. So I'm going to continue to do some of them in the future, but it does take a lot of time for me. So if it's something that you're interested in, definitely let me know in the comments down below. As far as the team that I brought, the main game plan here was uh, to use three of our defensive mons, our Beliva, Bronzong, and Electros to try to counter some of their offensive threats. The main ones that I'm pretty scared about are uh, Quackable, and Fluttermane, those are the two big ones, and both those mons um, can be dealt with by either Arboliva or by uh, Electros. So those are the two main defensive checks for those. And then um, our bronze one here was mostly to help out with Iron Treads that I didn't think would be too uh, offensive, but if it is, then um, bronze one deals with it. And then Glamora, the bronze one is mostly there to deal with that mon as well. We had uh, Sylveon here as a choice specs breaker. Uh, to free up um, our our offensive mons to be able to come in and win. Maybe if we can get some chip on some things, wear them down, then either our Great Tusk or our Roaring Moon would have a chance to set up and win. However, I didn't fully think that either one of those two mons would be the way that I necessarily win, because um, like a Choice Scarf uh, Fluttermane would outspeed even if I Dragon Dance on Roaring Moon, um, or if... Um, it was like booster energy for speed on Fluttermane. Same kind of deal. I thought that Mon could revenge both of those uh, options. So I had a feeling that this was going to be a little bit more of a balanced game um, going into prep. And seeing this team in team preview, I kind of have that same idea. Maybe I can use Roaring Moon uh, to win out on the match, but honestly more likely to see um, uh, those Mons potentially get checked by like uh, Fluttermane. Um, and so I'd have to use some of my defensive pivots and stuff to switch around. So anyway, that was the thoughts on the game plan. Let's go and actually take a look at uh, how I lead, right? Because the game starts um, before, you're in prep, right? Definitely starts there and trying to decide how you what you want to bring to a game and, and all that stuff. However, deciding what to lead is, is the first real decision that you make from the game phase of, of Draft League. And so I decided to lead Bronze on here. I think this was like that excellent choice. I think it was the best option I could have made. It does well against most of the mons that they have. It, it has coverage to hit pretty much everything here. The only one that's kind of an issue is Crocolore, um, but I don't ex necessarily expect that mon to be the lead. I would expect something else to be the lead. Because uh, like if I lead um, like Great Tusk, for example, like Crocolore doesn't want to be in against that immediately. So I was expecting um, either like an Iron Treads lead, um, a Glamora lead maybe, um, a bomb of snow uh, potentially, and uh, Bronzong does pretty well against all of those. First turn, I end up going for a body press here. I think this is my best play, and it covers for a ton of different things. I kind of assumed that they would go for a knockoff or swap, and if they go for a knockoff, like I didn't really want to lose my leftovers on this mon, but I can deal. And then uh, if they swap to Crocolor, then like I deal a little bit of damage on it, but that mon is actually really hard for us to deal with, so. It makes for some very interesting plays. So I end up going for a uh, body press here. It does the most amount of damage to this Mon, and then it helps me for being able to uh, just ch generally chip down their team. So I think this turn comes down to two options, either body press or psychic here. I think either option is defendable, but I end up going for a psychic on this play. On this turn, I decide to swap in Sylveon against the Crocolore. I think at the time this was the best decision because it's likely that this Pokemon is going for Will-O-Wisp or going for a fire move. Either one of those Sylveon is bulky enough to be able to take. However, there is a downside here that even though my Sylveon is Specs with uh, Psychic, it actually doesn't two hit KO this Pokemon. Uh, it's surprising how bulky Crocolore is. So I think in the moment it's best for me to go for this play because I have an opportunity to break through 
the Crocolore and to deal enough damage to it that I can get it low enough where Great Tusk is able to KO. However, Crocolore is definitely a threat for me and we'll see throughout the game how difficult it is for me to deal with this Pokemon. I recall this being a surprising moment when I didn't see hail, snow, when I didn't see snow go up from Obama snow. However, this let me know that the Obama snow was soundproof, which meant that Hyper Voice wasn't going to do any damage to it. Based on the damage output we saw from Psychic, I know that this Obama snow is very bulky on the special defense, and so Bronzong is my best switch in, which is what I do on this turn. I decided to make a double on this play, which I think is my best choice. The Crocolor switch in from my opponent's side feels very likely. I know I deal, deal very much damage to it, and I want to get rid of Leech Seed off of my Bronzong. I end up deciding to go into Electros, because if my opponent does stay in and decide to Leech Seed again, assuming that I'll swap, then Electros can use Volt Switch to get rid of the Leech Seed, or I can make another double. By going into Electros, I threaten the Crocolor that is likely to come in with a special attacker because it is likely to be physically defensive, and I think that puts me in the best situation. I go for Volt Switch on this play, which I think is my best option. It's a little defensible not to go for Volt Switch because they do still have a ground type, of course. However, Electros is here to beat the ground type because it's also a steel type and I have Flamethrower to be able to hit it. Luckily, with Levitate and being an electric typing, Iron Treads doesn't feel very much damage to me. So going for a Volt Switch is my best play. It gives me momentum or puts me in the matchup that I am favored in. My opponent's decision to bring in a water type against my electric type really shows how good Electros is in this matchup. It functions as a very good wall breaker against my opponent's team. Their best option that they decided was to go into Quackaval. Now, if you don't know the matchup, then this uh, seems very surprising. However, Quackaval is their Terra type uh, Pokemon, and it has an option to tear it into poison based on our Terra Captain rules. So at this time, I am fully expecting them to go for Terra Poison. And my best option is to go for T-Wave. I don't think that I have enough investment on Electros to be able to two-hit KO with Thunderbolt. So my best option is to T-Wave them so that this Pokemon isn't able to pick up KOs with Moxie and Aqua Step and outspeed my entire team. So as we can see, my opponent, Ellie, is definitely trying to sweep with this Pokemon. We just saw them go for a Sword Stance, and getting a Paralysis on this would be absolutely huge. Uh, it does lower the speed on this Pokemon, which if I can get some damage on it, means that I'll always be able to KO it 
using Great Tusk. So picking up this T-Wave onto the Quackaval is the best case scenario that could have happened for me. At this point, I don't have a good switch into this Pokemon, and my best option is to Thunderbolt and pick up as much damage as I can. I'm going to show the next couple of turns in succession, because my best play is to go for Thunderbolt until one of us is KO'd. I will have cut out this part that I'm going to talk about now. We now have information about this Glamora. When Glamora switched in, we got information that it is Air Balloon, which gives it its immunity to ground attacks. Both of my sweeping options between Great Tusk and Roaring Moon both have ground attacks that are aimed at this Glamora. So before I look to try to sweep with either Pokemon, I need to make sure that this Air Balloon is removed. I make the decision to sacrifice this Pokemon. Electros is slower than their Glamora, and there's no way that I'm going to be able to outspeed it here. However, I think that this is actually a pretty big mistake. It feels very weird to say this is a mistake. We know that they have rocks up, and this Pokemon will die to hazards. So it feels very weird to say that I should try to save this Pokemon, because it obviously dies to rocks, what's the point of keeping it around? However, I do have Rapid Spin on Great Tusk. And this Pokemon is my best option at being able to break. So if I'm able to get into Electros freely, then I have a good chance of being able to deal a ton of damage against their Abomasnow and Crocolore. So I think that it was very worthwhile to save this, even though it's at 1 HP. So I think that this is a mistake to have lost this Pokemon here. However, what is the play? I think my best play is one of two options. Either it was to go into Bronzong. Bronzong eats every attack from this Pokemon. Another option would actually be to go into Great Tusk, which feels very weird to say because this Pokemon does have an air balloon. However, going into Great Tusk, I know that I would take any attack from this and I would have the opportunity to Rapid Spin to remove the hazards and to get rid of their air balloon should they decide to stay in. I think that going into Great Tusk opens the line of play that they could potentially go into Fluttermane and that wouldn't be a great situation for me though. So I think Bronzong is the best play that I could have made here. I decide to go into Bronzong, which essentially forces the Glamora to swap out. I end up going for Psychic here, but I think this is a terrible play. It's the same reason that I had to double Bronzong earlier. It's so likely that they go into Croclore, and I need to be able to break that Pokemon. At this point, I should have made the double to go into Great Tusk so that I could look to threaten the Crocklore with Headlong Rush. I go for Psychic again on this turn, and this is such a terrible mistake. My thought process at the time was I wanted to put enough damage on it so that Headlong Rush would KO. However, I had already put enough damage on it that I should have doubled into Great Tusk on this last turn so that I would threaten this Pokemon. So I've compounded a mistake with another mistake. And this is a big problem, because this Crocolore is very difficult for my team to beat without getting a Will-O-Wisp onto Great Tusk. I'm trying to avoid that scenario, and it's just going to be very difficult to do that. I think this last turn is when I should have gone into Great Tusk, however, here we are. In this instance, because I haven't made that double, I think that my option actually is to still go into Great Tusk. I need to be able to break this Pokemon. The other option is to go into Sylveon, like I went into it earlier, and I think that that would have been an okay play too. I think it would have been better to go Great Tusk because of how much damage I could deal to this. However, going Sylveon on this turn would be okay because it follows in with the same line of thinking that I had earlier. My mistake from two turns ago on not doubling into Great Tusk is going to severely cost me. I end up going into Sylveon here, and this is 
At the time, it didn't feel like much of a mistake, but this is a massive mistake. The next couple of turns will show exactly why. This is the part of Draft League Battles that shows how important prep is. Ellie brought an amazing set, and the only way that I was going to be able to have a chance of breaking through this Pokemon was with my Great Tusk. I had to go into this earlier from the handful of turns ago that we talked about when I should have made that double. However, at this point, this is the best chance I have. No other Pokemon on my team is able to break through and deal with this Crocolore. We have finally dealt with that tiny little crocodile that was a massive pain. Thank god. <laughs> However, now we have to deal with Fluttermane. My best option is to go into Art Believer. I decided to stay in with Arbeliva and go for Giga Drain in this instance, but I think my best option was to double into Bronzong. If you recall earlier in Team Preview, we talked about the idea that Flutterman is likely Scarf to be able to outspeed a Dragon Dancing Roaring Moon. So I think it's very likely that this Pokemon is Choice Scarf and is likely to swap out so that they can preserve the Fluttermane. Abomasnow is a likely switch in. No Pokemon on my team switches into Abomasnow well, except for Bronzong, which has been severely weakened at this point. It was best for me to swap into Bronzong here so that I could counter the pivot from them into their Obama Snow. As you can see, I eventually had to make the pivot into Bronzong anyway. In this instant, I end up going for Gyro Ball. However, I think the best play was to go for Body Press. It's unlikely that Fluttermane switches in, and if the Glamora switches in, then I have Body Press to break its air balloon. My best play here is to go for Acrobatics to pick up this KO. It forces Fluttermane to come in, and then I can go back into Arboliva and use that to threaten the Fluttermane as well as to break the Balloon on Glamora. Going for Acrobatics here also covers any swap that they have. If they swap Fluttermane, I pick up the KO. If they swap Glamora, I break the Air Balloon. And if they don't swap, then I also pick up the KO on Obama Snow. Acrobatics was easily the best play for me right here. I'm fully expecting to be KO'd by D-Gleam right here, 
And I think my best play is exactly what I did, to go for acrobatics here. It breaks the air balloon and then allows Great Tusk to pick up the KO with that long rush. You would think that my best play here would be to go to Earthquake and sacrifice this Pokemon, which is essentially what I was expecting to do last turn by breaking the air balloon and then sacrificing this Pokemon. However, now that it's gone for Rock Polish and I've broken the air balloon, my best option is to go into Arboliva here. Arboliva is terrible against my opponent's remaining Pokemon, and my best option is actually to sacrifice it. By sacrificing Arboliva, it allows me to get in Great Tusk for free, and I can pick up the KO with Headlong Rush. Then I would be able to pick up the KO on Obama's note since it wouldn't be able to KO both Great Tusk and Roaring Moon. The simple choice for me to make in this instance is to go for Headlong Rush. However, Great Tusk is also my Terra Pokemon. I can Terrastalize into Ground or I can Terrastalize into Fairy. So I have a secondary option to make here as well. I know that with how bulky I am that I can take a Dazzling Gleam. And so my easy choice is to stay in, don't terastalize, take a Dazzling Gleam, and then pick up the KO. I also need to make sure that I don't take uh, a Sludge Wave if I terastalize into Fairy Typing, because that will 100% KO me. So it's very important that I don't terastalize here, even though this is my Terra Pokemon.